Hello, hello, welcome back. We're doing the applications of the definite integral and right now we're learning how to calculate the area. Alright, so in this video we're starting our first example on calculating the area between two curves. So let's begin with our first question. Um, it says find the area between the curves y equals minus x squared, sorry if you can't see that, plus 3. And the curve, if you you want to call it that, y equals 0. Alright, so the first thing you want to do when you find the area between the curves is that you want to basically sketch out these functions to show you exactly what area you're calculating. Alright, so let's do this. We have minus x squared plus 3. Well, we all know that x squared is a parabola that goes up like this, and we know that minus x squared is a parabola that goes down like this. So all we do is that we do the minus the downwards parabola, but we raise it up 3. So it's going to be something like this, pointing downwards, and it's going to be at y equals 3. And our other curve is y equals 0. So basically we're just going to have a straight line going through here. I'm sorry you can't see it, but you know it's there. Just make it a bit thicker. So for these, don't worry about making it nice or anything, it's just a rough sketch to show you what the area is. And as you can see, you should see that we have a bounded area now between these two curves, between our curves right here. And that's exactly what we wanted. So we want to calculate this area now. And if you remember, to calculate the area of this, we have to do the area, I mean the integral from A to B, of the upper function, which is our f of x, minus the lower function, g of x, times dx. So this is lower, and this is the upper function, okay? And we know that it starts here, and it starts here. So this is our a, and this is our b, right? So what do we need? We have to figure out what our a is, we have to figure out what our b is, we have to figure out which of these two functions is the upper function and which of these two functions is the lower function. Well, if we draw a rectangle like we did in, in the last video, let's put a rectangle right here, it doesn't really matter where it goes, it's going to be similar all across, but if that's our rectangle, we ask ourselves what function is touching the upper part of our rectangle. And as you can see, it's the parabola that touches the top of it. So we know that our minus x squared plus 3 is our upper function. And, well, because this is our upper, we only have one other choice. But if you look, uh, y equals 0 touches the bottom of our rectangle. So we know y equals 0 is our lower function which is f of x here, and this is g of x. Now we have to find our a and b. Well, just by using logic, we know that a is the value of... Essentially what you're doing is that you're finding at what point does our two functions intersect, and you can do that by combining the two functions. Okay, so we have y equals 0 here, and we have a y here. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to replace this y with 0 to get rid of the y and then you're just going to solve for x because a and b are values of x so we want to find out what these values are. All right. So we have y equals minus x squared plus 3 and then we just replace y with 0 because we're combining the two functions. So 0 equals minus x squared plus 3 and then we just solve for x, so we're going to put x on this side, and it becomes positive, equals 3. And then we take the square root of both sides, and we're going to get y equals root of 3. But remember, when we take square root, it's plus or minus. Therefore, we have two values. We have x equals minus root of 3, and x equals plus root of 3. And we'll know that a is minus root of 3, and b is plus root of 3. So now we can write our complete equation or our complete integral, which is a, which we now know is minus root of 3, and b is root of 3, and we now know the upper function is 
minus x squared plus 3 minus, now as you can see y just equals 0, so all you have to do is put minus 0, and as you get better, more experience, whatever, you won't have to put it anymore. And remember, every integral, if whatever variable you're working with, you're going to have d of the variable. So in this case, we're using x, so it's d of x. And remember, this is your width of all these little rectangles you're going to be having. There's an infinite amount from a to b. And this calculates the height of your integral, or of your, of your imaginary rectangles. All right? So let's solve for this. We're going to get minus... Now remember I said you have to have a background in integrals. I'm not going to explain how this works. You should know how this works. So if you don't, you have to do a quick review. And if you don't know at all, I'm, I don't know what you're doing watching this video, to be honest. All right, so now we have this. We're going to plug in these two values and see what we get. Okay, so we're going to plug in the root of 3 first. So we're going to get minus 3 root of 3. I hope that makes sense, right? Root of 3 times root of 3 gives us 3 times another root of 3 is just root of 3 divided by 3, and the 3's will cancel, and we have plus 3 times the root of 3. Now, remember, when you take the bottom bound, you have to take the minus of these terms, and we're replacing with a minus, and this term has a minus, so it can get pretty confusing. Watch out for that. Alright? So we have a minus, and we're taking the minus term, so it's going to be positive. Okay, so positive, but then we're plugging in a negative. So put in parentheses, you have a negative to the 3, divided by 3. And then we're taking the negative, but we're plugging in a negative, so it's going to be positive. So just put 3 root of 3. Now if we simplify, we get minus, and this is going to give us the same thing as this, so we're going to have two of them, 2 root of 3, and the 3's cancel. And then we have two of these, so we have plus 6 root of 3. Now we just add them together, and you can see we get 4 root of 3. And that's actually the area between these two functions. Pretty cool. <laughs> um, I want to make one note, though. Um, as you can see, well, my graph isn't drawn that nicely, but you know that parabola is symmetrical, right? So if you look at the area on the left of my finger, and then you compare it to the right of my finger, the area on the right of my finger, um, they're equal, they're identical. So to make your integral easier, what you can actually do is that you can take the area from this point to B. So this point is actually zero, right? So you can take it from zero to B, and now you have the area of half, um, well, you have half the area, right? So if you want the full area, because they're symmetrical, all you have to do is you put a 2 in front of it. All right? So let's try that, and we'll see if they equal the same thing. And if they do, then you know you can always do this for any, any area that's, that's um, symmetrical. You can just put a 2 to make your integral easier. So we're going to have new integral. And remember, it's going from the center now, which is 0, to b. So let's do that. So the center is 0, and our b is still the same, so we're going to have root of 3. And now the upper function, has it changed? No, it's still, it's still the same function that's touching the top of our rectangle here, and it's still the same lower function that's touching the bottom of our rectangle. So that doesn't change. The only thing that changes are the bounds, alright? So we're going to have minus x squared plus 3 minus 0, remember? But I'm not going to put the 0 this time, dx. What are we forgetting? The 2 out in front. That's what's going to make this equivalent to this because we're only calculating half, so we have to times it by 2. So this is a constant, so we leave it separate. So we have 2, and then we solve again. We get minus x third divided by 3 plus 3x. And all of this is from 0 to root of 3. Now if we do this, 
we're going to get 2 times, and we plug in the same values here, so we're going to get the same thing as before, so we're going to have minus root of 3 plus 3 root of 3, right? And now because this part is 0, we actually don't have the terms here that we had before, so we don't have to put that in. So that actually makes it a lot easier on us. See how much shorter it is than having this whole extra part? And now you just simplify and we're going to get minus 2 root of 3 plus 6 root of 3. And as you can see, it simplifies once again to 4 root of 3. And you can see they're exactly the same. So when you can, just a side note, if it's symmetrical, just put a 2 in front of your integral and because it has a lower bound of 0, it just makes uh, computing it a lot easier. Alright, thanks. Uh, the video is kind of long. Hopefully my next ones won't be as long, but hopefully this was well explained. Thanks.